guys you welcome back so after the birth of this man's second child he decided to accept islam and how did that happen let's check it out but i had no fear of god at the time so i didn't follow islam and i didn't have any want to follow islam i'm like i drink i smoke i ate pork and i did all the bad things i didn't want to follow islam hidayah belongs only to the almighty allah and Allah will give it to the servant who earnestly seeks it. And if Allah has given his guidance to someone, then the world and its contents are meaningless compared to that precious guidance. This is the story of convert Lauren Vaughn, who is now named Abdullah ibn Lauren. He was born in America and grew up in a poor family. Their lack of education leads them to get into trouble, use drugs, and move around a lot. As a teenager, Lauren Vaughn started looking for a job, hoping that it would change his life for the better. But everything was different. Living on the streets of America, he couldn't escape drugs and dating. I moved out when I was 16 years old, uh, got myself a job, uh, been working ever since nonstop, uh, was a cook, well started off as a, in the uh, restaurant business, started off at the bottom washing dishes and moved up to cook, line cook, then you know I stayed pretty much at that. Uh, raising kids, I was raising my girlfriend's uh, kids, she had two children, I've raised uh, my 19 year old now since he was like three months old and about 14 years ago life was tough I mean um, I did drugs and things like that I drank and smoked and did other things uh, we don't need to mention all this time he had no peace of mind no direction and no purpose basically everyone in life wants to have a good life that was Lauren Vaughn finally his spiritual quest began he came to a point where he realized and wanted to improve his life for the better he began to pray for guidance, but at the time he didn't really believe in the God of his religion. So, who should he pray to? I started, you know, wondering who God was, and I had wondered my whole life, but I had pretty much just given up and thought that I could be a good person. And then I had struggled. I wanted to pray. I really wanted to pray, but I didn't know who to pray to. So I started looking through my acquired goods, you know, necklaces and bracelets and talismans, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, things that I got gotten through the life of. Uh, of the street and I'm looking at these crucifixes and different things and these saints and all these different things rosaries and stuff like that and I'm looking to him like what if what if Jesus isn't God what if he's not God I mean maybe I don't think he is God and I was like what if he is what if I pray to him and he's not what if I pray to him and he, you know what if I don't pray to him and he is and I was confused didn't know what to do so I decided to just go default which was probably the best thing I could ever do in my life before I became a Muslim and I decided that I would pray to whoever controls everything Whoever's in control of everything, created everything, guides everything. Whoever you are, I know you're God. I don't know who you are. I have no idea. And I ask for guidance. I ask for strength. And I ask for help. Whoever seeks guidance earnestly, surely Allah will make an easy path for him. Indeed, everything is easy for Allah if he wills it. In an unexpected way, when his girlfriend was pregnant and wanted to give birth to their second child, Lauren Vaughn took his girlfriend to the hospital and he was guided by Allah there. His prayers have been answered by the Almighty Allah. Uh, when my youngest was born, he's 12 now, um, he was in the hospital when he was born and uh, I was wandering the hallways. Um, the, for a different story's reason, I wasn't allowed in the room at the time. Uh, they had me escorted out of the room, in a way, uh, by security. And I was down on the first floor, wandering around, trying to keep my mind off of the situation. So, there was they were selling books so I started looking through the books and it's all love stories and I'm like no I'm not into this I like I like history I like uh, theology I liked uh, things like that things that I could learn from none of it was there so I said goodbye to the ladies who were holding it um, this used book drive and as I said goodbye there was a book on the table that caught my eye and alhamdulillah it was the Quran and I said that book can I buy that and they said yeah go ahead so it was maybe a couple dollars I bought the Quran and I don't remember reading it that day but later on in the day, or maybe the next day, I started reading it, and I literally could not put it down at all. I couldn't put down the Quran. As soon as I started reading it, I just started reading it, and I couldn't stop. On breaks at work, I was reading it. At home, in downtime, I was reading it. At any moment before bed, I was reading it. When I woke up in the, in the morning, I'd go to work. I would get my break. I'd start reading it. On my lunch, I would read it. Lauren Vaughn continued to recite the Quran day and night. He gained a lot of knowledge from the Quran. He did not expect that the stories of the prophets that he had known in his religion were told more fully and clearly in the Quran. Little by little the questions in his life began to be answered. However, 
There was no help from friends or people who understood Islam, so naturally, there were some questions in his life that needed further explanation. He started going to YouTube to broaden his horizons. And I would go online and I would answer my questions at uh, Sunnah forums, and not forums, but uh, like um, Islam Q&A. And I would go to, and I would, started watching um, Mufti Mink and uh, Zakir Naik and, uh, you know, people like that. And getting my answers that I wanted. And literally, they were answers that were unfallible. They were perfect answers without any type of failing. It was perfect. I couldn't beat it. And every time I would learn something, I would take it to my father because my father was the, um, the greatest man I could ever know in my entire life. When I came with Islam and I started talking about the rulings in Islam, he would try to do it and then he would fall and he'd be like, I, it, it, it makes sense. I, I, have no, I have no way to beat that. The best way to live life is to surrender and fear Allah. Lauren Vaughn began to understand who Allah was, but was still unwilling to submit and follow Islam. But after reading the Quran repeatedly, and even getting answers from videos of Dr. Zakir Naik and Mufti Mank, he came to believe that Islam is the true religion and the straight path. Praise be to Allah. But I had no fear of God at the time. So I didn't follow Islam and I didn't have any want to follow Islam. I'm like, I drink, I smoke, I ate pork and I did all the bad things. I didn't want to follow Islam. I had no fear. And that's something that people like you find around and you're going to see it. Anyone who hears this, I don't know when you'll hear it, but you're going to see it. People will say, yes, that's the truth. I believe that, but I don't want to follow. I don't want to be a Muslim because they have no fear and they need fear. You need to fear. On one side, we have fear of fear of hellfire. On the other side, we have hope for salvation. And in the middle, we love Allah. This is a bird that flies. If you have a little too much fear on this side, if you fear too much, you become hopeless. So the hope is on this side. And if you hope too much and you have too much and you rely too much on the mercy, then you don't follow. So the fear will keep you moving forward and bettering yourself every day, inshallah. And I read it straight through the second time. Got all my answers. And by the time I read it the second time, straight through, I believed it was the word of God without a fault. And then the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was the final messenger and a messenger just like all the rest. But his message is still true. And that if anyone, that anyone who follows this religion, Islam, is on the perfect path. So I believe that there's no better way for a human being to live except to follow Islam. Believing was not enough to become a Muslim, Lauren Vaughn had to take the Shahada. His story is quite unique. Most people who convert to Islam usually say the Shahada in front of many people, or at least there are witnesses beside them. But unlike Lauren Vaughn, he said the Shahada alone and only Allah was his witness. His new journey began. And then I realized, I make a ghusl, I, make a, I, I, I clean myself, and I do the Shahada. And Allah is my witness, and then I'm a Muslim. And then I have to start, that's the first step. And then I have to start doing my prayers. So I looked up my prayers and how to do them, and I transliterated them, made a, uh, this is my old, I mean, you can tell it's really old, um, notebook. And I put it in transliteration and drew stick figures on how I would stand when I'm saying things. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all here. I don't know if you can see that. And I wrote it down, transliterated and in English so that I could say it and I put stick figures next to it. And there's more on the next page. Um, like that. And so I would hold this and I would do my prayers alone. I never met a Muslim yet. I had never met a Muslim, never. After becoming a Muslim, he visited the mosque in Bellingham and he repeated his Shahada there in the presence of others. He changed his name to Abdullu ibn Lauren Life in this world is full of trials. This is Allah's way of seeing who among his servants is patient and obedient to him. Trial after trial now befell Abdullah ibn Lauren. The mother of his children left him and his children went with their mother. He is alone now. He was looking for his father whom he had left behind long ago, and he found him. However, after some time, his father left him for good. Time went on. I moved in with my father. Uh, I did dawah to my father, and my father ended up becoming a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Uh, now, long story short, you know, I lost my father. Later on that year, his sister died. Later on that year, my grandmother died. Two out of three of those people I can't pray for. I can only pray for my father, and I trust Allah. He chose to take these people at the right time. In loss of my father, who was my best friend and my role model of my life, um, I told him before he died, I actually told him, I love you, Dad, and you're everything to me until I became a Muslim. Now, Allah 
and the Messenger of Allah, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, is my role model and my guide. And I thank you for everything you've given me, and I love him over myself. I love him over you, and I love him Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam over everything. After a long period of solitude, his beloved children finally returned to his arms. The mother who was caring for them at the time lost her home and became homeless. Thankfully, after being accepted by Abdullah ibn Lauren, his children embraced Islam. Like all parents, he hopes that his children will grow up to be people who are beneficial to religion and society. MashaAllah. My daughter this year um, did her shahada, alhamdulillah. My youngest, my 12 year old, this is his second year as a Muslim, alhamdulillah. He reads Arabic better than I do, alhamdulillah. May he become a great scholar one day, inshallah. Um, and my daughter and everyone in my family, be, you know, that I'm raising, like, may, may we become a benefit to this ummah, I pray. So, you know, life is a struggle. I've gone through so many struggles, and this is only a grain of sand in the struggles I've been through. Um, but I wanted to share this with everybody. And I would share my daughter and my kids and everything like that. My son's playing over at the, uh, at the beach. Um, I mean, I live at a campsite, move around a lot like a Bedouin or a, well, I don't have any sheep, so more like a gypsy. <laughs> Um, not really stable, so no, may Allah uh, make it easy for us all in our lives. And um, it's almost time for my dinner. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Everyone, stay strong through the struggle. There's a lot of struggles ahead, and there will be a lot of struggles behind. You know, may we be successful, and may Allah take us all as Muslims on the day we die. Accept our iman and accept us, and throw away all of our sins. Reward us and give us Jannah, uh, the highest level of Jannah, and be able to meet the Sahaba and be able to be there with uh, with Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and be among the greatest of the great and the greatest generation that ever existed. May Allah reward us with this and forgive us our sins. I mean, that is the story of Lauren Vaughn or Abdullah ibn Lauren. He now lives with his two children in a motor home given to him by a friend. He did not mind living in poverty because for him. Knowing Allah and his messenger was the highest wealth in his life. He now often preaches or makes videos of himself reading the Quran and uploads them on social media. Her determination in spreading goodness is extraordinary. Praise be to Allah. That's all for today's video. Hopefully, it will inspire many people. Go back to the Quran because all the answers to your questions are there. Don't hesitate. Open the Quran and read it. Thanks for watching. Hmm. Wow. Wow, like he said, before he decided to, you know, convert to Islam, his lifestyle was not, you know, it was not nice. It was not really okay. His lifestyle was just there. And, you know, he didn't even know the path he is. He didn't believe in any religion, but I think he knows something about islam before this whole issue started coming up in which he started you know living a life that he is not proud of you know involving in this dangerous art on this harmful art like drinking smoking and the rest they said after the, child, uh, the um, wife gave birth they took their shahada and they you know they converted to islam and that was beautiful beautiful to listen to but he said something that um after he accepted islam his mom died if his father died his grandmom died wow that was a very bad tragedy guys like even though he saw it as allah's fate but ah uh, I don't know, such news is not something, ah, well, I don't know what to say, guys. I don't know what to say, but that was a good step. That was a very lovely, you know, converse story. I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.